Hasta la vista, baby. Arnold Schwarzenegger is a famous actor, bodybuilder, politician, and businessman who managed to realize his American dream. In this video, we'll tell you about how a poor immigrant managed to turn into a governor and a Hollywood actor with a huge fortune. Arnold Schwarzenegger, how Terminator lives and how he spends his millions. Arnold Aloya Schwarzenegger was born on July 30, 1947, in the community of Tal, Austria, into a Catholic family of Gustav and Aurelia. It is known that in 1938, his father joined the Nazi army of Germany, which Arnold would be very ashamed of in the future. Although his father didn't have any proven war crimes, during the Second World War, Gustav participated in the siege of Leningrad, where he was seriously wounded. Arnold's parents got married in 1945. At that time, Gustav was 38 years old, and Arelli was 23 years old. For the girl, this marriage was her second. Her first husband died in the war. In 1946, Gustav and Arelia had their first child, Meinhard, and a year later, Arnold, who became an outcast in the family. All because Gustav suspected his wife of infidelity and believed that Arnold was not his biological son. Schwarzenegger's childhood cannot be called happy because his duties included getting up at 6 in the morning and doing all the hard work before school. For any mistake, his father who worked as the local chief of police severely punished him and even gave him the nickname Cinderella. In addition, the family lived very poorly, but this only motivated Arnold to become successful in the future. Gustav was an athlete and demanded the same from his sons, so Arnold played soccer from a young age and a little later started weightlifting. When the boy turned 14, he went with a friend to Vienna to watch the World Weightlifting Championships. Arnold was among the spectators watching Soviet weightlifter Yuri Vlasov win the world title, becoming the first person to lift 445 pounds over his head. Schwarzenegger was so impressed by what he saw that he decided that day he would devote his life to bodybuilding. Since then, Arnold began to train daily and on weekends when the gym was closed, he would break in through the window and work out even harder. His parents were concerned with their son's new hobby. His mother, seeing posters of half-naked muscular men in his room, even suspected Arnold of being gay, and his father was dissatisfied with the nationality of his main idol, Vlasov, and demanded to find a German or Austrian icon. At 17, Arnold participated in his first bodybuilding competition in Graz, where he took second place. At 18, he was drafted into the army for a year. It was impossible to call Schwarzenegger a good soldier. During his service, he managed to drown a tank in a river, destroy a hangar, and even go AWOL just to participate in the Mr. Europe contest. Because of this violation, he was sent to the guardhouse, but after learning that he took first place in that competition, the officers released him and even gave him a two-day vacation. After his service ended in 1966, Schwarzenegger went to Munich, where he got a job at a fitness club. It is worth noting that back then, Arnold severed ties with his father and brother, who had humiliated him, and in the future, he didn't even attend their funerals. In Munich, the young man didn't have enough money at first, and he had to sleep on the floor in the gym. In addition, matters would get worse because of constant fines for street fights, which he initiated almost every day. In the same year, Arnold went to London for the Mr. Universe contest, where he unexpectedly took second place. The following year, he managed to win the long-awaited title at 20, becoming the youngest winner in the entire history of the competition. At the same time, Schwarzenegger participated in international powerlifting tournaments, where he repeatedly became a champion. The young man always wanted to live in the USA, and in 1968, he realized his dream by moving to California, where he continued his training. At first, Schwarzenegger stayed in the country illegally, and he was able to obtain citizenship only in 1983. In addition, the young man spoke English rather poorly, but it didn't prevent him from reaching for success. Back then, Schwarzenegger already earned his first million a few years before the start of his acting career. Arriving in California, 
He opened a bricklaying business with a friend. Because of the earthquake in San Fernando, the demand for building materials increased and with it, the company's profit. The guys invested the money they earned in a new business, mailing out equipment and VHS tapes with instructions for bodybuilding and fitness. In 1969, Arnold met a teacher, Barbara Baker, who became his first love. The young man, of course, was infamous for numerous affairs, but before meeting Barbara, he didn't really love anyone. In the same year, Schwarzenegger participated for the first time in the Mr. Olympia contest, where he took second place. In the next year, he managed to win the competition and at 23, became the youngest champion in the entire history of the competition. This record hasn't been broken so far. At the same time, his acting career began. Arnold's film debut, was the lead role in Hercules in New York in 1970. But in the credits, he appeared under the last name Strong, since his real one seemed too difficult. What's your second name, Hercules what? As I've told you, I'm Hercules, the son of Zeus. I don't think it needs any disrespect, Captain. It probably was in the translation. All right, all right. Sign him on as Hercules Zeus since he says that's his father's name and give him an OS rating, bosun. Aye, aye, sir. His character's lines were also dubbed over because of his strong Austrian accent. A joke started circulating in Hollywood that only Schwarzenegger's accent is thicker than his muscles. Arnold considers his debut role the most unsuccessful. At the same time, it brought him $12,000. Then there were the roles in the films Happy Anniversary and Goodbye, The Streets of San Francisco, The San Pedro Beach Bums, and Stay Hungry. For the latter, Schwarzenegger was awarded the Golden Globe Award for New Star of the Year. Meanwhile, Arnold had no equal in bodybuilding. For six years, he was the permanent holder of the title Mr. Olympia and rightfully became a bodybuilding legend. Having reached all possible heights, Schwarzenegger announced his retirement from sports in 1975. A year before this event, he broke up with his beloved. The reason was Arnold's unwillingness to marry and have children which the girl wanted so much. After parting with Barbara, he met hairdresser Sue Murray, who shared his views on an open relationship. In 1977, Schwarzenegger, while in a relationship, started dating the journalist Maria Shriver, the niece of the 35th US President John F. Kennedy. This went on for a year, after which Sue insisted that Arnold decide between the girls. He chose Maria, whose relatives, by the way, were not happy about the potential son-in-law. During that period, Schwarzenegger starred in several films, The Villain, Scavenger Hunt, The Jane Mansfield Story, and Conan the Barbarian. The latter can be considered his first successful in his career. Priest's rope? Yes, it's all I have. Good. <laughs> That's all you'll ever need. Even though he was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anthe Award for the worst male role, the actor's payout then amounted to $250,000. Arnold performed all the stunts himself, so he returned to strength training. Having got in good shape, he decided to participate in the Mr. Olympia contest again, which he won. In 1984, the actor appeared in the sequel, Conan the Destroyer, which brought him $1 million. Later, the film Conan the Conqueror was supposed to come out, but Arnold was busy with another project, so the trilogy remained unfinished. In the same year, the action movie The Terminator was released, which became the most recognizable film with Schwarzenegger. His character's phrase, I'll be back, became the hallmark of the actor. I'll be back and also appeared in 37th place in the list of the 100 best quotes from films. Interestingly, the scene with this phrase took nine takes to film. For The Terminator, Arnold earned $750,000 and was also nominated for the Saturn Award for Best Actor. I think this guy's a couple cans short of a six pack. You're close. Give them to me, now. Fuck you, asshole. In 1985, the rising star was invited to star in the action movie Commando, which was well received by the public and brought Schwarzenegger $1.5 million. You scared, motherfucker? Well, you should be, because this green beret is going to kick your big ass. 
I eat green berets for breakfast. And right now I'm very hungry. I can't believe this macho bullshit. The actor performed all the stunts himself simply because it was hard to find a stuntman with the same physique. Although the lovemaking scene he did was so unconvincing that they had to cut it. In the same year, the film Red Sonja was released in which Danish actress Bridget Nielsen became Arnold's partner on the set. A stormy relationship flared between them, although at that time, Arnold was already engaged to Maria. After the filming was completed, the actor broke up with Nielsen, who didn't want to stay a mistress and threatened to tell his fiance everything. Then Schwarzenegger introduced Bridget to his friend Sylvester Stallone, whom she soon married. In 1986, Arnold got married too, with Maria Shriver. He had four children, Catherine, Christina, Patrick, and Christopher. A few months after the wedding, the film Raw Deal was released, in which he got the lead role. Schwarzenegger's acting career was gaining momentum, and with it, the payouts were growing. In 1987, he starred in two films, Predator and The Running Man, for which he earned $3 million and $5 million, respectively. Both films were well received by the public, and for Predator, Arnold was even nominated for Best Actor at the Saturn Film Award. At the same time, he received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. In 1988, Schwarzenegger appeared in the film Red Heat. His payout was $8 million. In the same year, with his appearance in the movie Twins with Danny DeVito, the actor proved that he can play comedy roles perfectly. My name is Julius, and I'm your twin brother. Oh, obviously. The moment I sat down, I thought I was looking into a mirror. The movie creator couldn't afford to pay the two actors, so they agreed to a percentage of sales, and it was worth it. The comedy had such a resounding success at the box office that Arnold received his biggest income of $35 million. The actor has repeatedly stated that he considers this film the best in his career. In the early 1990s, Schwarzenegger starred in the film's Kindergarten Cop, for which he received $12 million, Total Recall for $10 million, and Terminator 2, Judgment Day. Hasta la vista, baby. Yeah, or later, dick one. And if someone gets upset, you say, chill out. Or you could do combinations. Chill out, dick what? That's great. For the last two films, Arnold was nominated for the Best Actor category at the Saturn Film Awards. By the way, the actor preferred to receive the $15 million for the second part of The Terminator, In Kind, and asked for a Gulfstream 3 plane. Then, Schwarzenegger added the following films to his filmography. Dave, Beretta's Island, Last Action Hero, Junior, and True Lies. For the latter three, Arnold received payouts for $15 million each. Those works were awarded various nominations, and most of them Arnold received for the action movie True Lies in the category's Best Actor, Best Kiss, and Best Dance Sequence. Do you still love your husband? Yes, I love him. I've always loved him. In 1996, Arnold appeared in the comedy Jingle All the Way and in the action movie Eraser, where his partner on set was Vanessa Williams, with whom, according to rumors, he had a fleeting affair. For each of the films, the actor earned $20 million. In the next few years, Schwarzenegger starred in the films Batman and Robin, End of Days, and The Sixth Day. Even though the actor earned $72 million in total for these films, his acting was heavily criticized, and for each of these roles, he was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anti-Award as the worst actor. In the early 2000s, Arnold appeared in the films Collateral Damage, for which he earned $25 million, and Terminator 3, Rise of the Machines, for a payout of about $30 million. DX is designed to terminate other cybernetic organisms. So, she's an anti-Terminator... Terminator? You've got to be shitting me. No, 
I am not shitting you. After the release of the long-awaited sequel, Schwarzenegger announced his retirement from the film industry and the beginning of his political career. Despite the skepticism, in 2003, he was elected the 38th governor of California with 1.3 million votes. Even though Arnold's wife is a representative of the Democratic Kennedy clan, Schwarzenegger himself is a dedicated Republican. Arnold's political activity caused a contradictory reaction from the public, and the powerful opposition seriously lowered his rating. But in 2006, Schwarzenegger was re-elected for a second term, during which he stood out for his policy of reducing costs refusing the governor's salary, but all the efforts to save money by laying off civil servants and raising taxes ended with mass protest by trade unions. As a result, the state led by Arnold suffered more than the others from the consequences of the global crisis. During this period, Arnold did not have time to act in movies. In 2004, the pre-film film Around the World in 80 Days was released for the role in which he was nominated for another Golden Raspberry. By the way, in 2005, Arnold still received a special anti-award, becoming the worst Razzie loser of the first 25 years. Schwarzenegger stepped away from political affairs only for The Expendables in 2010, where he played a cameo role. Even in the fourth part of The Terminator, they had to use a digital image of the actor. In 2011, Arnold's second and last term as governor came to an end, so he returned to the cinema. According to some reports, during his political career, the actor missed the opportunity to earn $200 million in the film industry. Changes have also occurred in his personal life. After 25 years of marriage, Arnold announced that he and his wife were divorcing. Maria loved her husband very much and turned a blind eye to numerous infidelities, but she couldn't forgive one of them. The reason was their governess Mildred, whose son Joseph was surprisingly similar to Schwarzenegger. When Maria figured out that Joseph was Arnold's son, the marriage ended. In 2012, the actor appeared in The Expendables 2, for which he earned $10 million, even though all his scenes were shot in just five days. I need a weapon. Something big. Yours! Whoa, 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 whoa. My big weapon's hanging right where it is. Come on, Caesar, you gotta back up. If I don't get this back, your ass is terminated. In your dreams. In his spare time, Arnold gives motivational lectures around the world. He has written many books on bodybuilding, and in 2012, his autobiography, Total Recall, came out. The following year, Arnold starred in the films The Last Stand with a payout of $5 million in Escape Plan. Then he added several others to his filmography, like Sabotage, Maggie, Two and a Half Men, and The Expendables 3. And for the latter, he received another nomination for Golden Raspberry. In 2015, the film Terminator Genesis was released. You won't be needing any clothes. I've been waiting for you. It was decided not to hide Arnold Schwarzenegger's age with CGI. Instead, the writers decided to explain that the living tissue that covers the Terminator can age, and the robot's hair can turn gray. During the same period, it became known about Arnold's affair with physiotherapist Heather Milligan, who is 27 years younger than him. In 2017, Arnold appeared in the films Kill Gunther and Aftermath, which turned out to be commercially unsuccessful. In 2019, he starred in the films Terminator, Dark Fate, and V2, Journey to China, for which he again received a nomination for Golden Raspberry. Exercise, gentlemen. Perfect your bodies. Remember, a healthy body houses a healthy mind. Manzana in corpo sano. Exercise. Even though Schwarzenegger's acting is constantly being criticized, offers from directors continue to come, and soon, we will see new films with Iron Arnold. In 2021, Schwarzenegger's divorce process, which lasted 10 years, was completed. It took that long because the spouses hadn't signed a prenup at the time, so they had to share their jointly acquired property, and there was a lot of it. Today, Arnold's fortune is estimated at $450 million, 
which he earned through films, lectures, and advertising contracts. Arnold appeared in advertisements for a Japanese energy drink, BMW iX electric car, World of Tanks, and mobile strike games, Bud Light Beer, and others. Schwarzenegger invested money in securities of large companies, including Coca-Cola, Starbucks, and Google. Most of all, the actor liked to invest money in real estate, Nowadays, the value of Arnold's commercial real estate alone exceeds $100 million. But still, the center of his financial empire is the company Oak Productions, through which he receives payouts from film studios and percentages from comic and video game sales. At one time, the Schwarzeneggers owned a restaurant in Santa Monica, but in 1998, the establishment was sold. Also, together with LeBron James, Arnold founded a dietary supplement production company. Before the divorce, the couple lived in the Brentwood neighborhood of Los Angeles, where their children grew up. The mansion has an area of about 11,000 square feet. It includes nine bedrooms, several living rooms, a spacious kitchen, and a dining room. There is also a garden, a patio, a swimming pool with a unique geometric shape, and a tennis court. In 2013, this family nest was sold for $13 million. Now the Hollywood star lives in a one-story house with a large plot of land on the outskirts of Los Angeles with his favorite pets, Husky Dutch, Yorkshire Terrier Cherry, Donkey Lulu, and Pony Whiskey. Arnold owns a huge collection of cars, which includes Dodge Challenger SRT8, Excalibur Series 3 Phaeton, Hummer H1, Dodge M37, exclusive Jeep Grand Wagoneer Governator, Porsche 911, Mercedes SLS, Gallon Wagon Chrysler with an electric motor, Bugatti Veyron Grand Sport Vitez, a Mercedes model specially created for Iron Arnold, and even a real M47 tank, the model he drove in the army. The actor bought it from the Austrian government for $1.4 million. The celebrity spends a significant part of his income on charity. Back in 1995, Schwarzenegger founded an organization that provides an opportunity for children from low-income families to get an education. The foundation also helps fight against HIV, AIDS, and other diseases. For example, in 2020, Arnold allocated $1 million to support medical workers, and in 2021, spent $250,000 to build 25 houses for veterans. In addition, he collaborated with the organization Velos, which is engaged in the popularization of electric vehicles. Now Iron Arnold is rightfully considered a fan's favorite. A monument was erected in his honor. A programming language and even a Costa Rican ground beetle were named after him. And the Guinness Book of Records called him the most perfectly developed man in the history of the world. Do you like Arnold Schwarzenegger? Peter Dinklage, how Tyrion from Game of Thrones lives and how much he earns. Peter Hayden Dinklage was born on June 11, 1969 in Morristown, New Jersey in an ordinary family. His mother, Diane, worked as a music teacher in elementary school and his father, John Carl, was an insurance agent, but he was out of work for several months a year. The actor has German, Irish, and English blood in his veins. At the time of Peter's birth, the family was already raising a son, Jonathan. In early childhood, the future actor was diagnosed with a rare gene mutation, achondroplasia. This is a type of dwarfism in which the growth of limbs slows down. Although the head and body develop according to the norm, it is noteworthy that only Peter was diagnosed with this condition. The rest of the family members are absolutely healthy. At the age of five, the boy underwent surgery to straighten his legs, but doctors couldn't do more. In adolescence, Dinklage's height stopped at four feet five inches, while his weight was 77 pounds. Peter attended the Del Barton Catholic School for boys. Because of his appearance, he was often bullied by his peers, and because of that, he became hot-tempered and unsociable. In an interview, Dinklage admitted that he managed to cope with the pressure of society thanks to his family, who taught him to accept himself. With age, the boy began to treat his condition with humor, which added to his confidence. In the fifth grade, 
Peter played the main role in the school production of The Velveteen Rabbit and received such a storm of applause that he decided to become an actor. After that, he participated in many productions until graduation. In his spare time, Dinklage developed his talent by performing puppet shows for neighbors with his older brother. By the way, Jonathan also had good acting skills, but his love for music prevailed and he became a professional violinist. An interesting fact is that Bruce Springsteen's manager lived next door to the Dinklages. The famous musician often rehearsed there and according to Peter's family, it was loud and they didn't like it at all. After graduating from high school in 1987, the actor enrolled at the Bennington Theatre College in Vermont, where he chose to major in playwriting. There the guy proved himself as a talented and hardworking student, as well as a wonderful friend. Peter spent his extracurricular time, like all ordinary students, at loud parties with alcohol and music. He even performed with his own punk band, Wizzy, where he played trumpet and was one of the singers. In memory of his care for youth, Dinklage has a noticeable scar along his face, which he received during one of his concerts, jumping on stage. In 1991, the young man graduated from college. After that, he and his best friend Ian Bell went to New York, where they planned to open a theater company. The guys didn't have much money, so they rented a cheap apartment in Brooklyn with a hoard of rats and no heating. For a long time, Peter couldn't find a job. Theater groups didn't hire him, and movie producers only offered him to play leprechauns or gnomes. He refused to take them on principle, since most of them mocked people with dwarfism. After numerous casting failures, Dinklage got a job at a data processing company, but the money he earned was barely enough to pay the rent. Peter admitted that at that time he could often afford only a pack of chips a day. In the end, the guys were evicted for non-payment, after which Peter had to ask friends for a place to stay. Soon Dinklage got lucky and received a role in an independent movie. In 1995, the aspiring actor made a screen debut in the comedy drama Living in Oblivion, where his partner on the set was Steve Buscemi, who became his good friend. Do you know anyone who's had a dream with a dwarf in it? No! I don't even have dreams with dwarves in them. The only place I've seen dwarves in dreams is in stupid movies like this. In the film, Peter actually played himself, an actor who, due to dwarfism, is offered only stereotypical roles. However, despite the fact that Dinklage's acting received high reviews from critics, he couldn't find an agent. In 1996, Peter starred in Mickey Rourke's action movie, Bullet, but was not even listed in the official credits. In subsequent years, he only received minor roles in low-budget films, among which the most notable were Safe Men, Human Nature, Just the Kiss, 13 Moons, and the TV series Third Watch. In 2003, Dinklage appeared in the drama The Station Agent, where he was cast as a reclusive dwarf, doomed to endless ridicule by others. Really angry. About what? Being a dwarf. This role was a real breakthrough in his career and brought him many nominations for film awards, including the Screen Actors Guild Award for outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role. In the same year, the actor starred in the Christmas comedy film Elf and in the drama Tiptoes, where his partners on the set were Gary Oldman, Matthew McConaughey, and Kate Beckinsale. Peter also appeared on the stage of the New York Public Theater, playing the titular role in Shakespeare's Richard III, which was his longtime dream. Subsequently, Dinklage performed in many more plays. His love of the theater played a crucial role in the actor's personal life. Back in the late 90s, he met a theater director, Erica Schmidt, and a strong friendship arose between the young people based on mutual interest in dramatic art. And over the years, it turned into love. In 2004, Peter proposed to his beloved 
and a year later, the couple had a modest wedding. In 2005, Dinklage starred in the TV series Life As We Know It and Entourage, the drama The Baxter, the comedy surviving Eden, and in the drama Lassie, where he played an artist of a traveling circus. Then his filmography was replenished with the TV series Threshold and Nip Tuck, the romantic fantasy Penelope, and the crime drama Find Me Guilty, which also starred Vin Diesel. Despite the fact that the film failed at the box office, Peter's acting received high reviews from critics. In 2007, Dinklage played a mad scientist in the family fantasy Underdog, and also starred in the British comedy Death at a Funeral as Peter who appears at a funeral ceremony and declares that he was the lover of the deceased, demanding money from his relatives for silence. How do you think that makes me feel? No, I'll tell you how that makes me feel. It, cheap. Like a cheap slut. Don't you think I deserve something? The film became so popular that three years later, they made an American remake where Peter again played the same character, only with a different cast. In 2008, the actor appeared in the movie Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, where he played the dwarf Trumpkin. After the release of the film, critics unanimously stated that Dinklage failed to eliminate the stereotypical image, and he himself considered participation in this project a great disappointment. Then Peter's filmography was replenished with such works as the sitcom 30 Rock, the drama St. John of Las Vegas, the drama I Love You Too, the thriller The Last Rites of Ransom Pride, and the dark comedy Pete Smalls is Dead, where the man also acted as an executive producer. In 2011, Dinklage appeared in the romantic comedy drama A Little Bit of Heaven, as well as in the acclaimed series Game of Thrones, based on the series of novels A Song of Ice and Fire by George Martin. What you see is a dwarf. If I had been born a peasant, they might have left me out in the woods to die. Alas, I was born a Lannister of Casterly Rock. Things are expected of me. It is noteworthy that Peter became the first approved actor who didn't even participate in the casting. In the series, Peter played Tyrion Lannister, nicknamed the Imp, who led a rampant lifestyle. After the premiere of the first season, Dinklage's photo appeared on the cover of Rolling Stones, Playboy magazine called him a sexy man, and GQ awarded him the title of Stud of the Year 2011. The actor himself is skeptical about these titles, as he doesn't believe that in reality, women will be interested in people with dwarfism. Subsequently, Peter starred in seven more seasons of Game of Thrones, until 2019, In an interview, he admitted that when he got his hands on the script, he started reading it from the end to make sure that his character would live to see the last episode. At the same time, with each season, the popularity of his character only increased, and eventually he took second place in the ranking of the best characters of the series, second only to his on-screen sister, Cersei. At some point, I want to hear how a Night's Watch recruit became King of the North. As long as you tell me how a Lannister became hand to Daenerys Targaryen. Long and bloody tale. To be honest, I was drunk for most of it. By the way, Lena Headey, who played Cersei, is a longtime friend of Peter, and he advised the directors to invite her to the role. It's worth mentioning that among the actors of the series, Peter received the largest number of awards, four Emmys, a Golden Globe Award, a Saturn Award, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. And the New York Times called Peter Dinklage one of the eight actors who turned television into art. Game of Thrones has become the most successful HBO project of all time, as well as the most expensive in the fantasy genre. According to some reports, Peter's fee per episode was $150,000 in the first two seasons, $300,000 in the third and fourth seasons, half a million in the fifth and sixth seasons, and the last season brought him $1.1 million per episode. Thus, 
Dinklage's total income from filming in the series exceeded $30 million. In between Game of Thrones seasons, the actor participated in other projects, voicing cartoon characters Scrat's Continental Crack Up Part 2, Ice Age Continental Drift, Rick and Morty, and Angry Birds Movie 2. He also voiced Tyrion in the video game based on the series. In addition, Peter appeared in several films, in 2013, his filmography was replenished with the drama A Case of You and the comedy Nights of Badassdom. And in 2014, he appeared in the dramas Lowdown and The Angriest Man in Brooklyn, as well as the fantastic action movie X-Men Days of Future Past, where he played the evil scientist Boulevard Trask. By the time you see the need for my program, it'll be too late and you will have lost two wars in one lifetime. It's worth noting that Dinklage wanted to star in this film so much that he agreed to the role without even reading the script. His acting received high reviews from critics and he himself was nominated for the MTV Channel Award for Best Villain. In 2015, Peter starred in the drama Taxi and in the fantastic comedy Pixels, which was criticized and was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Ante Award. In 2016, Dinklage, together with his business partner David Ginsberg, founded a film production company, Estuary Films. In the same year, his filmography was replenished with the comedy The Boss, and in the following year, he appeared in the detective Rememory, the drama's Three Christs and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, starring Francis McDormand and Woody Harrelson. You two boyfriend and girlfriend? Early stages, you know. Is that right? We had a couple dates. The latter picture received high reviews from critics, and the creators, along with the actors, received many awards, including two Oscars and four Golden Globes. Despite the fact that Peter himself didn't receive anything for his role, the audience noted his image as one of the most memorable. In 2018, the actor played the main role in the fantastic drama, I Think We're Alone Now, and in the biographical film, My Dinner with Hervé which tells about the last days of the French actor, Hervé Villachez. Being famous is like being drunk, except the whole world is drunk with you. By the way, in both films, Peter was also a producer. In the same year, Dinklage appeared as a giant dwarf in the superhero movie Avengers, Infinity War, which became one of the highest grossing films in history. What happened here? You were supposed to protect us. Asgard was supposed to protect us! Asgard is destroyed. In 2019, Peter played a cameo role in the comedy Between Two Ferns, the movie. And next year he starred in the thriller, I Care A Lot. He also voiced one of the characters of the cartoon, The Crudes, A New Age. In 2021, Dinklage appeared in the title role in the musical Serrano, based on the plot of the stage play of the same name, the script of which was written by his wife. Freak. <laughs> Is that it? Have you exhausted your dictionary of scorn? Interestingly enough, he literally begged Erica to choose him for this role, as he dreamed of singing on stage. However, unlike the original work, the disadvantage of the main character is not a huge nose, but a small stature. For his brilliant performance in the musical, Peter was nominated for a Golden Globe. Now Peter's acting career is still on the rise. In the summer of 2022, the comedy American Dreamer premiered. Also the filming of the movies She Came to Me the Toxic Avenger, and Brothers has already been completed. And The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and Hit Pig are at the stage of filming. To date, Dinklage's fortune is estimated at $25 million, which includes film royalties and advertising contracts. In 2017, Peter starred in an advertising short film of the beer brand Estrella Dam. And in 2018, he rapped in a commercial for Doritos and Mountain Dew with Morgan Freeman. 
The actor also advertised Cisco's The Network Intuitive. The funny thing is that Dinklage, having become famous, signed such a serious contract because at the beginning of his career, he was only offered the role of elves in Christmas advertising, which he refused. The celebrity carefully hides his personal life from the public. Peter doesn't have social media accounts and is very angry when paparazzi are watching his family. The media learned that in December 2011, his wife gave birth to his daughter, whose name they don't disclose. And in September 2017, another child appeared in the family, whose gender and name are also unknown. According to some reports, the children don't inherit their father's condition. Dinklage and his family lived in Manhattan for a long time, where it could often be seen walking his dog or riding a scooter. A few years ago, the couple moved to a country house with a huge garden, which Peter enjoys taking care of. But all this remains hidden from the cameras and the prying eyes of fans. The actor owns a Chrysler 300, which was designed specifically for his condition, for obvious reasons, he also orders custom-made outfits or buys clothes in children's stores. Dinklage has been a vegetarian since the age of 16. When he needed to eat meat on the set of Game of Thrones, instead of real meat, they use tofu or just fake food. Peter is also a member of several animal rights organizations. One, he voiced the video Face Your Food on behalf of PETA, promoting eating vegan food for ethical reasons. The actor was repeatedly asked if he, as a celebrity, wanted to represent the interests of people with dwarfism. Dinklage replied that even now, he doesn't always manage to put up with his condition. So it would be hypocritical to try to help people cope with something that he can't cope with himself. However, he still took advantage of his popularity to draw attention to one incident. In 2012, in his speech at the Golden Globe ceremony, he mentioned the actor with dwarfism, Martin Henderson, who was thrown by a drunk rugby player at a New Zealand bar. As a result of the fall, Henderson suffered spinal damage and eventually died of his injuries in 2016. Peter became world famous after the release of Game of Thrones, but his filmography is full of other outstanding works. What movie with Peter Dinklage do you like the most? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.